A few years ago, knowing how to code could get you three job offers on the spot. Today, you're lucky if you get three call back. The job market feels brutal. Layoffs every week, hiring freezes, reorgs, and corporate politics at all time high if you're lucky to even have a job. And if you're a new grad, you are not just competing with other juniors, you are competing with other seasoned engineers with three years, four years, or even five years of experience. So yeah, it feels like golden era of tech is over. But is it really? Here is what no one tells you. Two things can be true at the same time. Yes, the market is tougher than ever. Tech is still growing just in different places. So the real question isn't, is tech dead? It's how do you build your career in the new version of tech? So what exactly is happening in the job market? Let's start with the real data, not just the headlines. According to layoffs.fii, more than 320,000 tech workers have been laid off globally in just the last 18 months. Most of those cuts hit recruiting, middle management, and technical roles. But here's the part most headlines skip. Tech hiring is still up 8% year over year, especially in AI, data infrastructure, and cloud. So if the hiring is up, why does everyone still feel bad? Here is the real tea, and it's not AI taking jobs. During COVID, tech companies saw a massive digital boom. Everything was online, everything moved online, sales grew, usage grew, revenue grew, stock grew, and companies assumed that the growth would last forever. They built hiring plans on overly optimistic forecast models and overhired like crazy. Teams doubled overnight, new orgs were spun up, roles were created without long-term need. Fast forward to today, the world normalized, but the payroll stayed. Companies blame AI because it's easy. But let's be honest, AI is not replacing entire teams yet. We are nowhere close to that. As somebody who is a power user of AI, that includes you and me, we all know that AI is not there yet. What is actually happening is this. AI is extremely expensive to run. Running one large language model prompt costs one cent to 10 cents. That sounds tiny, right? Until you scale it. At 20 million prompts a month, a company is burning 200,000 to 2 million per month in just inference cost alone. That's before GPUs, infra, or salaries. So now companies are juggling two massive cost pressure, the cost of their COVID overhiring and the cost of trying to catch up in the AI race. Some people also believe companies overhired H1B talent during the boom or are offshoring work to cut labor costs. And while it's a sensitive topic, it's part of the conversation candidates are having. In my opinion, companies cut headcount not because of AI or to replace people, but because AI is draining budget that used to pay for people. The layoffs aren't about AI taking jobs. They're about companies paying for past mistakes and candidates like you and me feeling it. We all know that AI adoption is rising across the board and the job market is shifting with it. The question most people have is what this actually means for their career. Before I jump into the case study, I wanna give a quick shout out to Perplexity's Comet AI browser for partnering on this segment of the video. Comet can read a job description and pull the right job requirements and customize your resume based on the job posting that you're applying to. In addition to this, there are two other use cases where Comet has been really, really helpful for me. Number one is for finding coding solutions on Stack Overflow with comment. Number two is triggering AI assistant into any web page, including Python documentation or a research paper that is 20 pages long. In addition to these two use cases, there are five other use cases that I personally love using Comet for. You can watch the full video here. You can try Perplexity Comet for free using the link in description below. Now let's talk about what candidates are actually going through in the job market when they are job searching. Let's actually zoom in and look at a case study of what exactly is happening in the job market and specifically the candidate experience. I recently spoke to Pooja Dutt on my channel, who's a software engineer with over three years of experience at Microsoft. She assumed that her fang experience would open doors for her. But here's what she told me. How many jobs did you apply to? I didn't apply for that many. I would say like 25. 25. And how many did you get a call back? Two. Not even job offers, two call back. And she later told me that none of those two interviews converted into an actual job offer even with big tech experience. She eventually decided to take a break from corporate environment altogether. She also talked about something that we don't talk about often, which is privilege. She had enough savings, so she's treating this time as short sabbatical. In reality, most people don't have that flexibility. All the numbers and data and stories point to a really sad picture of the job market, but here is what you can actually control.
control and focus on, here are three things that you should be focusing on if you aren't already. Number one, specialize and show proof. You can't look like a generalist anymore. Pick a clear lane, backend analytics, engineering, ML ops, AI product, whatever it is, pick a lane and go in depth and specialize in it. For example, for me, my specialty is A-B testing experimentation in a digital e-commerce space and specifically in a large search engine. Number two is become AI productive. You don't need to be an AI engineer, but you do need to work with AI. That means using AI to code faster, analyze smarter, automate tasks, and speed up your workflow. Remember, somebody using AI will not replace you, but they will outperform you. And number three, networking. Cold applications are basically dead. Referrals, relationship, and visibility are moving the needle now. Reach out to hiring managers, join meetups, DM people who work at the companies that you care about and want to work at, contribute to outsource, whatever you can to build your brand and build your network. In this job market, your network will get you the interview and your skills will get you the offer. With all that being said, let's be honest. This is a rough period to be in, in the job market. There's no question about it. We are in a transition phase. The industry is rewriting itself in real time and it's un uncomfortable for everyone. So I'm going to be frank right now. If you have a job, hold on to it, stay visible. That's the best you can do. And if you're looking for a job, apply, network, build proof. That's the best you can do in the market right now. And you can also use that time to learn a new skill. I know it's not easy, but it is temporary. We'll make it to the other side, but it might take time for the time being. Just keep going and focus on what you can control. What are your thoughts? Do you think tech job market is going to get better in 2026? Let me know in comments. With that, I hope you're having a great day. I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.